everyone, my name is Vanilla, and today we are going to talk about a country. What country do you ask? It's Canada! Now please sit down and pay attention because we worked hard on this. You may know Canada as the country of maple syrup, mousses, and aggressive hockey. Well, most of that is true, there's actually more to that. Canada is a country in North America. Its 10 provinces and 3 territories extend from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and northward into the Arctic Ocean, covering over 9.98 million square kilometers, making it the second world's largest country by total area. After 100 years of tradition, O Canada was proclaimed Canada's national anthem in 1980. The music for O Canada was composed in, in 1880 by this person, and the French lyrics were written by this person. And while on the topic of clothing, women wear leather-like dresses and feathers and mini jingle bells which are called jingle dresses. Same thing goes for men, but as well as more covered in very co colorful. Often wearing, seen wearing black, red, white, and yellow, even brown, dark blue, and orange. While poutine is now available at fine restaurants and fast food chains alike, it was completely unknown in the mid-20th century. The combination of fresh-cut fries, cheese skirts, and gravy first appeared in roller Quebec snack bars in the late 1950s. Though the precise origins of poutine are much debated in most cases, the dish was developed in stages. Proximities to fromageries, proceeding cheese skirts in century de Quebec was one key ingredient. Within the area, several towns and families lay claim to poutine's creation. In Warwick, near Victoriaville, Fernand Le Chance of Café Cafe Ideal has said that he first added curds to fly, fries at the request of Eddie Lenise. A regular customer in 1957, the combination became popular with diners customizing the dish by adding ketchup or vinegar. In 1963, Le Chance began to serve the dish on a plate to contain the mess left on his table. When customer complained that the fries grew too quickly on the plate, he doused the fries and curds with gravy. And that's how Canada's national dish was made, I guess. Here's Putin in picture, someone put it, I don't know, Audrey. Okay, that's all. Bye. Even though we talk about many things about Canada right now, we have get to talk about the history about Canada Day. Canada Day is public holiday. It is a day off for the general population and schools and most businesses are closed. Canada's national flag is seen on Canada Day, obviously, and their flag consists of a red island metal leaf with 11 points at the center of a white background and vertical red bands. On, on the left and right side, not only the present, the cultural heritage of the nation, but also symbolize health, peace, tranquility, and naturally dominant in the country. For ice hockey, a group of colleges, universities, and military and athletic clubs formed the Ontario Hockey Association in 1890. Governor General Lord Stanley donated a trophy in 1893 for the national championship, and the first Stanley Cup game was played on 22nd March 1893 with Montreal. AAA victorious before a crowd of 5,000. The Stanley Cup is considered the premier trophy in professional ice hockey. Canada has won many medals in ice hockey, such as winning the first gold Olympic medal in history and the first international world championship at the Olympic Games in Antwerp, Belgium in 1920, and winning a gold medal at the first Olympic Winter Games in Germanics, France in 1924. However, for lacrosse in 1925, the Canadian Lacrosse Association was founded. It, it is the governing body of lacrosse in Canada. It conducts national junior and senior championship tournaments for men and women in both field and box lacrosse. One of the biggest championships for Canada in lacrosse was the 2006 World Lacrosse Championship held in London, Ontario. Canada beat the United States 15 to 10 in the final to break a 28 year US winning streak. Thank you for listening to our video about the country that has been said to be the nicest by the internet. We're sorry if we confused if anyone is confused by this <laughs> and sorry if we offended some Canadians watching this. We are sorry. But either way, we want to say thank you for watching and also subscribe to Vanos Gaming. Hello, I'm Elefone Scafandra, I'm 16.
Menurut Falik Ahmada from absent number 22 I am Puanjo Nur Hafizan Nasution, absent number 23 And I am Reisha Nami Raditwan, absent number 25 And in this video, we will be describing Elizabeth's Tower Elizabeth's Tower, or as we know it, Big Ben, is one of the most recognizable tourist attractions in the world. It was first drafted in 1834 to be a part of the new Palace of Westminster, as the old palace burned down earlier that year. The clock tower was designed by Augustus Pugin, an English architect specializing in Gothic Revival style. Using his expertise, he created the building before shortly passing away in 1852. The actual clock, though, funnily enough, was not designed by a clockmaker, but by a lawyer named Edmund Beckett. After 25 long years of construction work, St. Stephen's Tower, later named Elizabeth's Tower in 2012, to commemorate her Diamond Jubilee year, was finally finished and Big Ben first rang on May 21, 1859. Standing at an impressive 316 feet, the tower is the third tallest clock tower in the UK. The tower's square base measures 40 feet on each side and is made of concrete. The exterior of the tower is constructed from bricks clad and the spire is covered in hundreds of cast iron roof tiles. The total amount of stone and bricks used in the construction was more than 3,000 cubic feet and 92,000 cubic feet respectively. In the highest room, there is the Ayrton Light, which turns on when members of the parliament are meeting in the palace below. Below it is the four clock faces on each side, making the clock visible from any direction. Astonishingly, the clock is accurate within two seconds, which is a hefty feat considering the hands are more than four meters long. Directly above the clock is the belfry, the room in which the bells, including Big Ben, are housed. Big Ben is the nickname for the great bell which strikes every hour. Though the origins of the name is somewhat unclear, it got so popular to the point that nowadays, people mistakenly use it to refill the whole tower. There are four other bells surrounding the big man, which are called the quarter bells. These bells are displayed the iconic Westminster chimes every 15 minutes. The process of striking the bells as well as turning the hands of the dials. Use no electricity and is entirely powered by gravity. As it is located at the north end of the House of Parliament, which is in the most famous area in London, it's no wonder how it became so iconic. Today, it's one of the most visited places in England, bringing in millions of tourists per year. It's also close to the other tourist attractions, such as the London Eye, Westminster IAB, and Buckingham Palace. Elizabeth Tower lives on with its legacy of being a symbolic icon representing the United Kingdom. Thank you for watching our video. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.